at the beginning, I mentioned a particular difficulty in understanding the specific differences between wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So if you don't mind, uh, I was hoping we could look a little more closely at those three in particular to understand uh, what the differences between them are and also what the differences between them and their maybe their respective um, natural virtues or, you know, the, 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 uh, the habit of theology, for example, would be, um, or infused knowledge, any of those things, uh, that they're distinct from. Um, so, uh, I, he starts with, uh, John of the, John of St. Thomas starts with understanding and, and that's the, the, the lengthiest chapter, but, um, I, it's up to you, uh, where, where you would, which one you would like to start with, um, well, We'll start with understanding because that's that's where everything begins. And that's why dear John of St. Thomas starts there. It's because understanding, even apart from the gift, the gift perfects this, raises it up. But understanding is that habitus that we have when we understand first principles. So, for example, what is a principle? A principle is that from which something proceeds in any way which means that a principle can be a cause, all causes are principles, but not all principles are causes. A principle simply means that from which something proceeds. So for example, you and I, knowing what we know about reality, we can encounter a first truth. For example, there's a real distinction between being and nothingness. We know that. That's a self-evident first principle. Being and existence are one thing, Non-being is something really distinct. And from that principle, we can reason to other things. Okay, so if being and non-being are really distinct, that tree exists, it has being, we can understand that that tree is not nothing. And it's important, if we don't have principles which serve as like the steps upon which the human soul is able to progress in understanding knowledge, we can't go anywhere because understanding has to do with the very first and primary principles from which all human knowledge and human experience proceeds. Therefore, understanding as a gift of the Holy Spirit is penetrating most profoundly into principles, particularly those principles, those things that are most important, most uh, significant for salvation. It's almost like we can see in something, whether it be a mystery of the faith or even something that's natural, but seeing its implications for the supernatural, we almost can read within it like the secret divine writing within any mystery or any truth or a specific mystery Mm -hmm. or specific truth. So understanding is the intrinsic, interior, penetrating comprehension, understanding of the starting points of all subsequent uh, reflection. After understanding, then of course we get to knowledge, which is where we adjudicate between and in light of principles, other things. Knowledge is when we move from principles to conclusions. And when we look at matters of faith and right action, and we judge them correctly. Uh, so if principles, uh, the understanding is about looking at the intrinsic importance and significance and profundity of a thing. Knowledge is where we move in light of that to look at a judgment with, rega- with regard to faith and right action uh, proceeding from that. Wisdom is both a knowledge of and a judgment about divine things. It's the ability to judge and direct human affairs and all specific details which knowledge considered individually, but in light of single principles. So uh, wisdom is like going up onto a mountain and looking, this is a kind of a Garrigou Lagrange image, and looking at all of the, the streams, the valleys, the trees, seeing how everything everything in light of a single point, the top of a mountain. Science or knowledge is like walking into, in the mountain, in the forest, in the river, and looking at everything in its specificity. 
and understanding is the starting place to know that there is a mountain and there is a forest and there are rivers, etc. Um, in an, in the end, it comes down to penetrating into principles, into reality, and making adjudications between things that always end up with making a truth or, or recognizing a judgment adequately and accurately, terminating in faith and right moral conduct vis-a-vis -vis God and divine things. Hmm. What I feel horrible about as I continue is that I am sure many of your audience right now saying, what in the world is this? This is why just think of lump wisdom, understanding and knowledge together to say that God enables you to see rightly and to make decisions and judgments about things rightly, both very particularly in detail, but also in the big picture. That's basically mm. what these gifts are doing. This details right. in the big picture, God enables you to see. It's like being in the matrix, to use a, an older movie. You just see the zeros and ones of the divine order of things perfectly, very <laughs> clearly delineated. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, I have a, a few follow-up questions about those those three gifts. Um, Please. One is, uh, how do those gifts coexist with the obscurity of faith? John of St. Thomas discusses this, particularly with regard to understanding, but we could ask, ask it about all three. Sure. So the obscurity of faith, uh, how do they coexist? They coexist because we are, the faith is a theological virtue, but it's still and it resides within us, but it's still operate, operative, enacted according to us. So it's not just limited. Faith is, again, wonderful, but it's still restricted. It's still ours. It's still human. And it's still only enacted vis-a-vis -vis our natural abilities to enact things. Such that when I see by faith, I don't actually see through faith directly with my own eyes um, the Trinity. I believe and I have faith when God tells me what he sees directly. And I believe that, that he doesn't lie. Hmm. So faith is almost like seeing through the eyes of God, which are really not my eyes. He tells me what he sees, what he knows, and I believe that. But I'm still not seeing. And that always remains in us, this side of heaven. What the gifts do is it's very similar, we could even say, to like the Mount Tabor experience, whereby God almost for a moment opens our eyes, not fully, because we're not going to have that until we're in the beatific vision, but to a degree, it's like, here, let me show you this with your own eyes, so to speak. Mm. And that's a transitory, that's a temporal thing. Um, like St. Thomas, uh, when he had the vision, understood, you know, that the, what the divine mysteries that he had been studying, uh, he saw in a profound and elevated way with his intellect. Um, he didn't stay in that state. Um, right. So similarly, the fact of the matter is we will never, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not always enacted. And so there will be times where we can almost, it's like we're seeing with our own eyes directly the mysteries that God is and that God has revealed, but we always don't see fully and exhaustively. So that's where the, the obscurity comes back. We all, there will never be a time this side of heaven where I don't need to look at the divine mysteries through the eyes of God telling me what he sees. Right. Even if at times he says, hey, let me, let me, let me pull back the curtain just a little bit for you to get a glimpse. We still right. have, we can't see everything. Go ahead, please. But, but also, uh, John of St. Thomas, he also says of understanding that this, uh, our penetration of the principles uh, of divine things is a negative one, or of the terms, uh, he says, we, we know what the thing is not. So we have a certain mm -hmm. clarity of knowledge, but it's still not the direct vision, at least with understanding specifically, uh, it's still not sure. the direct vision of uh, divine things. It isn't, but, and he also adverts to it. One can only understand what something is not if there is some understanding of what is. Mm, so even okay. there, it's you got that dialectic. It's a fascinating thing. 
I know that what I'm seeing in the principles is more the negative. Like I recognize that this is not X, Y, and Z. However, that's presupposing like that I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, these. It's a very profound, profound things. I mean, these, obviously, that's these, a huge topic in the history of theology, <laughs> right? The that's right. The apophatic and the cataphatic. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what is the point of studying theology? Since through the intellectual gifts we have these things through love, without which, without having love at its as its end, theology would be vain anyway. The primary reason is that God loves us too much to make theology unnecessary for us. And by that I mean God loves us on all levels. Which means the highest level, the gifts, the Holy Spirit. He loves us such that he will open our eyes to see in a light-shadowed, way almost directly if we can speak like that the divine mysteries if the gifts are activated in terms of knowledge wisdom understanding etc but he loves us such that he doesn't just want us to be activated on that highest level but he also wants us to be activated more in the day-to-day -day level which is a level that requires faith hope and charity certainly but also human effort human activity he wants us to be activated not just in an extraordinary way towards him, but on an ordinary way towards him. Mm -hmm. So that sanctifies all levels, degrees of human activity and activation by the Lord. So theology then is uh, beautiful and profound and saving because it is it shows that yes, even if the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not directly being activated, and if I have to read this book, or read the Bible, read the Catechism, think about what does it mean for Jesus to be one divine person with a human nature and a divine nature? How is this possible? Um, and mm. let's say for at this moment the gifts are not being activated, but I can work through deliberately, slowly, carefully these distinctions, understanding this. God is saying, yes, my beloved son or daughter, you can understand me even when all you have is the light of faith and the serving light of reason without the gifts being activated, uh, even on this very human level of knowledge, you can come to know me. So that's the main point. It, it's, it, makes, so it makes our union with God through knowledge and love not just on the highest echelon of the gifts, but right. even to the very basic uh, fundamental. Yeah. 